This man of God is using my God mightily in every part of this world. Australia, South America, North America. And he started in the ministry, starting used by God when he was seven years old. And he's 22 years old now, right? He's a young man of God. I want you to welcome Reverend Pastor Alejandro Arias. Palakpakan po natin ang Panginoon. Hallelujah. All right, how's everyone doing? How's everyone doing? Tell your neighbor you're more than a conqueror in Christ. Tell your neighbor next to you you're more than a conqueror. You know, I feel really blessed and really thrilled and I feel excited about what God is doing in Philippines. I can see the next generation of evangelists, pastors, teachers, apostles, the next generation that will revolutionize this nation for Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe you guys will revolutionize this nation as you guys go out there and preach the gospel. Great things are going to happen. Can you believe God can use you in this time, in this season? Can you believe you are the generation? How many of you believe God can use you to turn around this generation? How many of you can believe that God can do awesome things in your life? Amen. You know, I'm very excited to be here and I just want to share... Uh, my testimony, and I also want to preach on Gideon. Uh, he was a tremendous leader. He really, <clears throat> his testimony, I mean, his example really taught me a lot of things. And uh, I just want to teach you today. I want to challenge you. just want to leave a challenge in your life. If I can summarize in two words, what I'm going to say is, this is the time, this is the hour, you are the generation God is looking for. I just want to summarize it in, the, in two words. You are the generation God is looking for. God is going to use you to, hallelujah, turn this world upside down. God is going to use you to bring your friends to Christ. God is going to use you to revolutionize your community. God is going to use you to be the light of the world. Come on, somebody. God is going to use you to make, to make an impact on somebody else's life. God is going to use you to, hallelujah, to, to live a great testimony, great legacy in this world. Guys, we are not the future generation. We're not only the future generation, but we are the present generation. And you know, when I hear that about the future generation, when I hear adults and people saying, you are the future generation, I normally don't like that because we are the present generation that will take the gospel and the good news to the present generation. God is going to use us today, not tomorrow. He wants to use you today. He wants to start using you today. But the only thing is you got to open your heart. You got to be available to the Holy Spirit and, and start building that friendship with the Holy Spirit. You know, it's a blessing to be here, and I just want to identify with you guys. I started preaching when I was 11 years old. I began to preach in the parks of my community. When I was 8 years old, my, uh, my dad, <clears throat> who, was a, who was the owner of two bars in the community, when I was 8 years old, I will go inside of my dad's bars, and I will pass out some tracts that I will actually compose myself. I will get a hold of these napkins and I will write Christian messages on the napkins and I'll, I'll sneak into the bar and I will pass them out and, and, and try to witness to some of these people that will come 
every night. My passion was to preach the gospel. It has been my passion for many years. God called me at such an early age. Nobody, hardly, I found support. Hardly people believed that God could use a young man. But you know what? In spite of all the unbelief, and in spite of all the criticism, and in spite of all the negativity, God chose me. God raised me up, and He opened the doors, and He took me from place to place. And so far, it's been 11 years, and I've been preaching uh, to almost every continent around the world. And I'm here to tell you, if He did it, with me he can do it he can do it in your life and he can do it in your family if he changed my dad he can change your family if he changed my family he can change your household you just got to be willing to serve the Lord you just got to be willing to pay the price you just got to be willing to stand up and make the difference because you are today's generation and you will change this nation for the gospel come on somebody i want to see the youth i want to see i want to see the youth this afternoon where are those kids that are on fire for jesus christ can you shout hallelujah i want you to open your bibles in second kings chapter six actually no sorry no dodges now, Second Kings, Judges chapter six. We're going to start reading from verse. We're going to start reading from verse seven. And the Bible says, "When the Israelites cried to the Lord because of Midian, he." Send them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says. I brought you up out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I snatched you from the power of Egypt and from the hand of all your oppressors. I drove them from before you and gave you their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak of Enophra that belonged to Joash the Abias, right? Where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, the Lord is with you mighty warrior but sir Gideon replied if the Lord is with us why has all this happened to us where are all his wonders that our fathers told us about when they said did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt but now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hand of Midian the Lord turned to him and said go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand am I not sending you but Lord Lord Gideon asked, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites together. Gideon replied, if now I have found favor before you, give me a sign that it is really you talking to me. See, if we read this scripture, we're going to realize that Gideon was not only was he afraid of that calling, not only did he feel challenged when God actually visited him when the angel of the Lord walked into his room, not only did he feel powerless to some degree because he didn't have the preparation and he didn't have what it took to set the Israelites free from the oppression, but he felt he felt as though he didn't have the resources in order to set him free. Yet the Lord did not see what he had. Yet the Lord did not see the little he had to offer. The Lord saw his potential. The Lord saw his heart. The Lord saw what men cannot see. 
And the Lord looked at him, and the Lord said, the angel of the Lord said, With that power you will go and save the people from the Midianites. Now, 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 friends, if you see, see, this is ironic because Gideon was actually complaining. I mean, come on, he was complaining. He was saying, hey, I'm the least in my family. My clan is the weakest. I mean, there's no way I can approve, I can qualify to be the savior of Israel. There is no way I can reach up that standard. There is no way I can do it. However, the angel of the Lord turned around and said, With that power you will save Israel. What power was he talking about? I mean, can you get it? I mean, Gideon was actually complaining. He, he was saying, Oh, I can't do it. I'm not qualified. I don't have what it takes. But then, the angel of the Lord looked into his heart and said, With that power you will go. See, because men can only see what, it, what, 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 what they can see from the outside. They can see from the outward. But only God can see what happens in the heart. Only God can see what is really going on in your heart. And God knows that you have a great potential. And God knows how many nights and days you have prayed for your city. You have prayed for your family. And God knows how many tears you have, you have shed. And God knows how many things you have done. God knows the intimate details of your life. And let me tell you something. He will give you the victory over everything that you have prayed for. Because you are more than a conqueror in Jesus Christ. Come on somebody. I want to see those young kids that are on fire here in Philippines. Come on shout hallelujah. You gotta understand this. God does not see your appearance. God does not see what you have to offer. God does not care. God doesn't care what you have to offer, what you, whether you approve or not, whether you qualify or not, whether you have the Bible, the school um, certificates or not. God doesn't really care about that. What God cares is your heart. He cares about your heart. And if you give your heart, and if you give Him a chance, He's going to use you powerfully. He's going to use you mightily. And you're going to be the next evangelist, the next pastor, the next apostle. Although I know the education is important, and, and, and you know, throughout that journey, I'm sure God will bring the right people and you will be educated and you will learn more about the Bible. But it, it's not the main, it's not the main thing in order for you to start your calling. You better start it now. You better start believing God, that God can use you now. Tell someone, God can use you now. This is my message today. I came all the way from Aruba. I was actually preaching in a, in a conference two days ago. And I got on the plane and I said, I'm going to Philippines because I'm going to challenge my generation. And I'm going to tell them that they're calling, that they're important to God. I mean, guys, you are important to God. God has awesome things for you. God has great things in the store for you. And this is the time. It's not tomorrow. Today is your time. This is the time for you to get a hold of the promises of God and to start walking in your calling. And you might be thinking, well, I don't think I'm qualified. It doesn't matter whether you think you're qualified or not. Well, I don't think I have gone through the school. It doesn't matter whether you have gone through school or not. What it matters is your obedience. If you are obedient to the calling of God in your life, things will change. If you are obedient to the calling of God in your life, you will be used by God powerfully. 
Now, I want to tell you, Gideon didn't have much to offer. Yet he was, when, when, when God showed him his power, he was willing, he surrendered. See, what you, maybe people doesn't believe who you are. Maybe people, when they look at you, they don't think that you can do much. But let me tell you something. God sees what man cannot see. And I'm believing and trusting that you have a great potential. And this is a time where God is going to use you as the, as the future, not, not as the future only, but as the present generation that will ignite the Philippines for Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody. You will be used used by God and you will bring many souls to the kingdom but you better start now I want you to tell your neighbor turn around and tell two or three people around you you better start now tell two or three people around you come on tell two or three kids around you you better start now and you might be thinking how do I start now I don't even have a church I don't even have a program how do I start now well let me tell you something you got the technology how many of you have Facebook accounts here lift up your hand if you have a Facebook account well instead of putting those those uh those depressing comments oh I'm feeling bad oh I'm eating chocolate oh I'm eating ice cream instead of putting all those comments you better start telling your friends how great is your God come on somebody you better start telling them how awesome is your God you better start preaching to them by Facebook how many of you have MySpace I want to see you lift up your hand MySpace if you have a MySpace account tell them about your God how many of you chat by messenger I want to see your hand if you chat by messenger tell them about your God how many of you do text messaging how many of you do t CMS lift up your hand well instead of talking about your girlfriends and your boyfriends tell him about your God he is alive and he is powerful and he can change the Philippines come on somebody you better start preaching the gospel now and you might and you may not you didn't think that that was the way of preaching the gospel. Yes, it is. God has given us powerful tools, yet we don't use them because we think that we should do it this way. Let me tell you something. Start with what you have, and God will bless you, and He will open the doors for you. Amen. When I was 11 years old, I remember someone handed a microphone, and he said, Are you ready to preach? He asked me, Are you ready to preach? I looked at him. I was actually shaking and I said yes I'm ready to preach I didn't have a clue of what I was going to say of what I was going to preach yet I stood there and I, I, I preached the gospel and more than seven souls came to Christ that day I want to challenge you today believe God for your calling amen come on let's just stand up and praise God for a moment and just worship God oh Father we thank you we love you and we know you are in this place and your presence has filled this place and I just want to ask you to 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 just just pour your Holy Spirit upon them and let them receive more come on lift up your hands lift up your hands lift up your hands as you worship as you worship as you worship as you worship father I thank you for their lives I know father God you will use them as a great generation and I know there will be the next, the next, the next faith heroes, the next faith generals. Father God, I pray that you will use them with power. Show them your glory. Show them your glory. Open the heavens, Lord. Let them see your glory in Jesus' name. Let's worship God. Let's worship God. Lift up your hands and worship God. Worship God. The fire of the Holy Spirit is starting to come down. The fire of the Holy Spirit is starting to come down. Come on, kids. Lift up your hands and give it to the Lord.
sing. This is what the Lord is putting in my heart. You have heard many speakers on this stage telling you about your calling and how special you are before God. But I don't want to tell you once more what God has in store for you. I want you to activate what God has given you. And I'm just going to do this. This is a prophetic act. I just feel it in my spirit. I want you to lay your hands on somebody else, on your friend. And I want you to pray for one another. Come on, just pray for one another. Lay your hands on your friend. Lay your hands on your friend. Lay your hands two by two. Let's do it two by two. Let's do it in, 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 in groups of two or three. I believe God is going to pour His Holy Spirit upon many of you. And your lives will never be the same. And let's worship God for a few minutes and let's say, How great.